Well, my grandfather Avery came home one day with a pearl police whistle, beautiful whistle, and he gave it to me. I don't know what the occasion was, but it was beautiful, and I tooted on that thing in my it sounded marvelous. Well, I took it to school the next day, and uh, here I was, uh, just starting first grade, five and a half years old. And on the way from the school, Uncle David and I were walking down the street in Brooklyn. We had spent our money, couldn't ride the bus. So we were walking. And I'd toot this whistle every once in a while. Oh, I was so proud of it. Well, I gave a blast on it just before an intersection. And uh, I didn't think anything about it, except that that was a wonderful sound. Well, what happened was there was a van, I remember, a closed van. And he looked over and realized it wasn't a policeman. I had the whistle. The fellow in back of him did not. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the other way around. The van did not look over. The fellow in back of him did, and he realized it was not a policeman. Well, he rammed right into the van and they were, that was quite an accident. Mm -hmm. Nobody hurt, but uh, we kept on walking. And then it dawned on me that, uh, you know, I had caused that accident. And uh, I, at the moment, you know, when it happened, I didn't really think about that. So we walked on at a fairly good pace. And uh, my Uncle Carl, was walking behind us, and I had no idea that he was. And he came upon the scene and asked the men, what happened here? And uh, one of them said, oh, those kids down there, they blew a whistle and it confused us, and here we are. And he looked down there and recognized the two of us. He didn't say a word, <laughs> but he kept on walking. And when he got home, we were already there, and uh, the news got out very quickly, and uh, I think, as I remember, that I got probably a little paddling, but my grandfather, when he got home, he took that whistle away. I never saw it again. <laughs> so that was the end of the police whistle.